Good evening. Welcome back to Ambassador Baptist Church, our Sunday night service. Good to have everyone here. Got our missionary letter read, so pray for all of our missionaries. And we're going to start tonight. This morning we talked about getting back to the Bible. Tonight we're going to talk about getting back to Bible living. Mm. Living the Bible. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 22 kind of gives us exactly what we ought to be doing. If you want to turn there, James chapter 1, verse 22, kind of the theme scripture for tonight. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Mm. And so we got plenty of hearers of the word, and folks that come and they hear it, and yeah, they hear it, and it goes in, and sometimes <coughs> it goes out, sometimes it bounces around. James says we not only need to be hearers, but we need to be doers of what we hear. Amen. And so surveys, uh, we saw a big sign the other day that said back to school. What we need is back to the Bible. Yeah, just take school out and put back to the Bible. Or schools back to the Bible, whichever. Yeah. But surveys show that 94% of Americans own a Bible. Mm. Is that amazing? 90% of us believe it still applies today, yet only half of us read it weekly, including at church. Mm. And only 29% read it weekly outside of church. So somewhere there's a disconnect, yeah. uh, obviously. But most people uh, are not completely opposed to the Bible. They just simply are apathetic toward it. Mm -hmm. They're not opposed to us having a Bible. As long as we don't get up and start preaching it and, and quoting it and what have you to them. and so, uh, But they're apathetic. They have one, but they're not going to read it. And they never go to church. And so we need to get back to Bible living. Living out what it says, being doers of the word. Uh, because America has easy access to Bibles. You can go to Walmart and get a Bible. Uh, you can even get a KJV at Walmart if you look real hard. Uh, but, but here's the thing. Luke 12, verse 48. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 48. The latter part of that I wrote out, but I'll turn over there and read the whole thing. But Luke chapter 12, verse 48 Kind of for those of us that have a Bible, uh, this kind of puts it where the rubber meets the road, if I can get to Luke chapter 12. It's in here somewhere. Luke chapter 12, there she is, verse 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whom... Much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. The phrase there, for unto whomsoever much is given, much shall be required. God has given us his word. And in his word it tells us many things about life and how to live and how to behave and, and all the things that we need to do. So we've been given much. We're expected to give much in return. And that falls under the word obedient. See, we are accountable to keep God's word. We are accountable to be doers and not hearers only. That's what James is saying. So we're going to give an account one day. That's the thing. We've been given God's word. We've been given much, and much is required. To read it, to obey it, to follow it, to live it. Uh, the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, they had the same problem. They had the law. And they had the prophets. But like many of us today, they didn't want to do it. They, didn't, they were apathetic toward it. The law told them what was required of them to do. And I just, we're studying the Ten Commandments on Wednesday night, so we'll get into some of that. But when you read Ten Commandments going forward a few chapters, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. I mean, really, you and I today, we wouldn't be alive if we had to go by the law. Because when we disobeyed our parents, guess what that meant? Yes. Death. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that we're not under the law, amen? But, but, and then they had the prophets to tell them that judgment was coming because of sin and because they didn't obey the law. And so they had all that. Yet, with all of that, and knowing all of that, they disregarded the law and the prophets. And they just didn't want anything to do with it. So uh, turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 21. 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 21. You got all the 
those kings, and you got all those chronicles. You got to get past the kings first. Of course, if you put your string in there like me, you get there real quick. <laughs> you cheat. Second Chronicles chapter thirty-four, verse twenty-one. God inquire, God, uh, go inquire of the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do all that is written in this book. They had it. It was there. But their fathers didn't do it fathers didn't do it, guess who it didn't get passed on to? The children. Yeah. 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 And it's the same thing with us today. Much has been given, much is required. And it's our responsibility to pass it on to our children and our grandchildren, those of you that are grandparents here on Grandparents Day. Uh, look at the next verse. And Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvoth, the son of Harshar, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. They had college back in that day. And they spake to her to this effect, to that effect. And she answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place, and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, and humble thyself before me, and disrender thy clothes, and weep before me, I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thy eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem, and the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites, and all the people, great and small, and read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And so obviously, uh, reading the word of God and obeying the word of God is important, and when you don't do it, and you don't want to do it, you go against it, God is going to pour out his wrath. Or his, his uh, judgment. And you see the king, he came in and did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm going to bless you. So uh, we can read the word of God and God will bless us. Or we can be disobedient to it and suffer the consequences. In Jeremiah 16, 11, he said, Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods and have served them and have worshipped them and forsaken me and not kept my law. And so this was all done because they refused to be obedient to the word of God and to live out the word of God. See, Israel was accountable to God because they had God's law. And so the error was that they didn't live out the law. They didn't obey it. And the same is true for you and I today. The only difference is it's not the law, it's the word of God that he has given to us. And he's commanded us. Imagine if every person in America had a Bible. And every person in America read that Bible. And every person in America went to church faithfully. And every person in America lived the Bible. What do you think America would be like today? Where do you think we would be today? We wouldn't have all the problems that we're having right now. Uh, we, we need to get back to Bible living. And while the whole world is not going to do it, and is not going to obey it and adhere to it, those of us that know God ought to be doing it. And so uh, it, it becomes... Our responsibility. That's why there's so much problems in the world today. It's because we're not doing 
Well, we ought to be doing. You read the church in the book of Acts and all of them back in the day and what they did and how they lived and how they sold and how they helped. And, and there was revival fire. If we had that kind of stuff today, we might could turn America back to God. Martin Luther said, you may as well quit reading and hearing the word of God and give it to the devil if you do not desire to live it according to it. And that's right. I mean, because if we're not living the Bible, we're living on the other side. And, and doing what's not right. And so James 1.22, our scripture tonight is to, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever heard this, but there's a thing back in February of 2010, uh, a man named Nathan did this thing called the James 1.22 Project. Mm. And, and this guy heard the scripture, and, and he decided that he was going to put that into practice. So they had a thing for 40 days. Uh, uh, they were assigned 40 commands in the New Testament, practical ways, and they were going to focus on each one of those commands per week. So he took it to heart. Some, some of the commands included uh, forgiving as the Lord has forgiven you, uh, for confessing our sins one to another, uh, for serving one another in love, uh, for doing all things without murmuring and complaints, like the children of Israel did. So the first week he started out, it was talking about caring for widows. And he told how that he uh, lived in a nursing, his grandma lived in a nursing home and he took care of her. And he put that into practice. Week number four was talking about working with all your heart. And so uh, he was a lawyer and he, he did a law, worked in a law firm. And he became disinterested in his work until he read Colossians 3.22, which says... And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So he began to take his work seriously and began to do things heartily as unto the Lord, as if he was serving the Lord. So he went through week number 6, confessing his sins to his pastor. Uh, week number 10, he stepped out of his comfort zone to encourage other people and to be a witness. Week 23, he took Ephesians 4.25 to heart. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for you are all members one of another, and start telling the truth. Started quitting the line. Week 29, he honored his parents. Invited them to dinner and spoke with them. Week 35, he got rid of his anxiety. Uh, Matthew 6, 34, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. So he began to cast all his cares on the Lord. Got all the way up to the final week, week 40. Took a little longer than he expected, but he was a new man. He was a changed person. And uh, he, he put out a blog about all this. And just simply something that we simply need to do. And that's that we need to live out the commandments of the Word of God. To live the Bible. Uh, and to do it purposefully. Might, might do us some good to take a 40 day or 40 week challenge and try to do some of those things. And, and just pick out a verse and study it. And then try to live it out that week. It's hard, I'm sure. But if we don't, then we're just going to be hearers of the Word and not doers only. We can read the Bible. We can hear preaching telling us what to do. But what good does it do if we don't apply it in our lives? So I want to give you real quickly tonight uh, three things that I believe, specific things, that if we're going to be doers of the Word, then we got to have these things in, in place. And number one is in your mouth. Put a little water in my mouth. Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 and 7. Well, let's turn there. Because it's going downhill fast from here. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. You had supper yet, Mark? I'm good. <laughs> <We're> good. <clears throat> well, then, we may take a little longer. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. And these words, which I have commanded thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Mm. What did the Bible say? Thy word have I hid in my heart. heart. Shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Well, how are you going to teach it unto your children? And shalt talk of them. The mouth. Shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. <coughs> Living the word of God ought to be on our mouth and our mind all the time. We ought to be talking about it. The best thing that we can talk about is God. Is it not? I mean, that's the thing that we have. And talk about His Word. We can share His Word. 
we can encourage other people with his word. Uh, sometimes when people are scourging down, a good thing to do be give them some scriptures or some word. Be a good way to, to, to live it out. Find ways to get God's word out. The Bible said his word would not return void. Mm -hmm. So let's get it out there. Let's share it with folks. Uh, even share it on Facebook. If you notice our church Facebook page, nearly every day if I get, get to it, I try to put a scripture on there. Because there's 200 and some odd people following that I don't have a clue who half of them are. But if we put scripture on there, they're reading. If they're looking every day, they're reading the scripture. It's not going to come back void. It's going to be in their mind. And, and it may be that someone comes there someday and looks and is going through something. They read the scripture of that day. And God uses that to help them. That's a good way to, to use our mouth to get the word out. Do it on Facebook. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of things you can put on there that we don't need to put on there. There's a lot of things on there that don't need to be on there. Yeah, that's right. But then there's a lot of things that you can put that are good. Yeah. And, and I get on a couple of <clears throat> pages of some people that are in high offices. And sometimes I just put scriptures on there. You know, about blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and thou shalt not kill, and give them over to a reprobate mind. And, you know, good scriptures that make people think. And I'll probably get arrested someday. I don't know. But you look at the Old Testament, I mean, the New Testament, and, and Peter and Paul and all that, what were they doing? They were talking up the scriptures in Christ everywhere they went. And that's a good example for us. Amen? And so we need to get the word in our mouth and then get it out there. Secondly, in your mind, not only in your mouth, but in your mind. All of us have a mind here, do we not? I've already quoted it once, Psalms 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now, when the Bible talks about the mind or the heart, it's talking about the mind. It's talking about the emotion. It's talking about uh, the will. And so we need the word of God. We need to use our minds. There's all kinds of things. Uh, that we can do with our mind when it comes to the Word of God, uh, memorize Scripture. That's a good thing to do. That's a good way to hide in our heart. To read it every day and to put it up there. To renew our mind with the Word of God. Um, to guard against sin. Hide in our hearts that we might not sin against God. Uh, make it a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Put it up here so when you need direction... It's there, and it can be a lamp and a light, and it can direct you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He guides us, and He directs us, and so we need to put it in our mind. And you can't do that like this. No. You've got to open it up. Read it. Put it up there. Uh, I like when I read chapters, and I'm just reading through the Bible, reading with the dr dramatized version, because I hear it, in different languages and different people and different voices and different kind of like a play, but at the same time I'm following along and reading it, and then it just it's there. Mm -hmm. And and in my mind, I've got Paul looking like this, and I've got the devil looking like this. And, and it just it makes it come to life as well as reading it. And so we need to have it in our mouth, we need to have it in our mind, but Probably the most important thing is we need to have it in our walk. Yeah. Need to have it in our walk. Psalms 1. Psalm chapter number 1. Most of you know these verses. How many like to be blessed? I'm going to tell you how you can be blessed. Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not, N-O-T, not, in the counsel of the ungodly. We got plenty of that out there. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. What is the law? Do you delight in the Word of God? Do you love reading it? Is it a delight to you, or is it just, oh, I'm going to read it because preacher said read it? <laughs> but his delight is in the law of the, of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day once a month, <laughs> day and night. You know how you meditate day and night? You hide it, and it just comes up. Yep. Something happens. Someone says something, and it comes up, and you meditate on that. Uh, 
Meditate on it day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So God's word ought to impact your life every day. If you read it every day, it ought to affect your life every day. Not only that, your life should be overflowing with blessings. Because God promised to bless those that read it. And to bless those that keep it. And to bless those that are delighted in it. Is that what it not have said? It said that then you'd be like a tree planted by the water. That bringeth forth fruit. And the leaves don't wither. And you prosper. Who doesn't want to prosper? That's why we need to be living according to the word of God. Listen, it's not a burden. It's a blessing. Because when you live according to the Bible and you have Bible living, God will bless you. God will drop groceries off at your porch. God will drop a check in your mailbox that you didn't see coming. God will replace a microwave that you thought, oh, what am I going to do? That's what God will do. That's what he promised to do. And when he does it, we're like, wow. But that's what he said he would do. And so it's a blessing, is it not? Now, this walk that I'm talking about, it'll walk you to church. I mean, I know you drive, but you get out of the car and walk into the church. But the walk will walk you to church. It'll take you to church whenever you want to go. This walk means you're always ready and willing to share the gospel. If you're walking in the Word, I mean, thy word is nigh in my mouth. And you just, I mean, the Bible says, how shall they hear except we tell it? And so if you're walking... That walk will give you an opportunity because we walk everywhere we go and we walk. There's an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody, is it not? This walk also means you don't go to certain worldly places because if you walk in there, you take God with you. Think about that. Because yeah. He dwells in us. We're the temple. So uh, when we walk, it'll keep us from, it should keep us from going to some places. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, it should keep us from ungodly places that are thriving in the world today. Yeah. Yes. And if we somehow get into those places, our light ought to be so bright that they want us out of that place. Yeah. Or we ought to be talking and using our mouth and our mind that they want to get us out of that place because they don't want nothing to do with the Word. Mm -hmm. And so when we're living it, that's what happens. Uh, and so, uh, in other words, the Bible will be the direct control of your life and my life. If we're living it, if we're allowing it. See, if we seek to put God first and let Him be in control and let Him guide us, then that means that we are Bible-living Christians. And that's what God wants us to be. Now, I've got one verse that I'm going to give you that covers all three of those points tonight. Aren't you glad the Bible does that? Joshua 1.8. I'll let you turn there so you can see it. Joshua 1 8. All three of these points are in there because that's where all three of these points came from. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. mouth. What's point number one? Your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. What do you use to meditate? Mind. Your mind. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. That's walking. You're a walking, living epistle. You're a walking Bible. What's the results? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So we have our mouth, and we have our mind, and we have our walk, and they ought to be all based on the scripture and living for God. You want to be prosperous? It's right there. It tells you right there. You want a successful life? It tells you how to do it right there. Isn't it great that the Bible gives us the answers? God's word needs to be in your mouth, in your mind, and in your walk. But this doesn't need to be on the shelf. Because it does you no good sitting on the shelf. Or I guess in the world we live in today on the coffee table. Or on the side table. Or in the back seat of the car. Yeah. Or wherever we throw it down when we leave church. We need to live it. We need to, we need to read the Bible. God commanded us to read it. Amen. Then we need to let the Bible read us. 
Because when you start reading this, it'll start telling you what you need to take care of and what you need to correct. Then we need to confess, confess our sins. Uh, listen, it'll change us. Amen. It'll make us what God wants us to be. Memorize God's Word. You may can only memorize a verse a week or a verse a month, but start somewhere. Memorize it. I mean, if, it, if it's real desperate, just go to John 11, 35. Jesus wept. Start there. And then when you think to yourself, Jesus wept, you think, well, let's see, he wept at Calvary. He wept over Jerusalem. And then it just start, your mind just starts bringing all those things up. And then you start weeping. And then you're living the Bible because Jesus wept, now you're weeping. And you're just like Jesus. And, that, and we just put it into practice. That's what we've got to do. We're not going to make a difference in this world until we do. But here's the thing. To whom much is given, much shall be required. So what are you being required of tonight? And what have you, uh, and that's what, what are you going to do with what you've been given? That's the question. You have the word. Tonight, now you know where the word needs to be in your mouth and your mind and your walk. So now, you've been given much. What are you going to do with it? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for your word tonight. We're thankful uh, for your love for us. We're thankful for the things that we can learn from your word that you've given to us. And Father, I pray today that you will help us to examine our lives and help us to examine our mouths to see if that we are living the word out through our mouth that we are speaking of you and talking and quoting your word and talking to others about you and our mind, Lord, that we're using it to think of the things that we can do to uh, enlarge the kingdom and to better serve you. And then, Father, that our walk, that we're walking the walk and talking the talk and that we're doing what your word commands us to do. And if not, that we will repent of that and begin to do it because we've been given much and now we know much is required. So I pray that you will help us to fulfill our requirements and we'll give you the praise for it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Got hot in here. It is, it is warm.